Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now to build a successful AMD FX 9590 gaming PC you need a few things. You'll need a top end 990FX socket AM3 Plus motherboard, a quality liquid cooling solution and a decent high wattage power supply. This machine has none of those things. I bought this build second hand online for £200, roughly $240 or €220. Euros. The basic specs were listed and therefore I assume that the rest of the components would be sufficient in keeping this thing stable. An AM3 Plus based build certainly doesn't sound like the best way to spend £200, but my intention was to sell the individual components separately for a quick profit. This would have been pretty straightforward considering high-end AM3 Plus stuff still fetches decent money. The initial purchase was a risk and ultimately didn't work out for me too well. After all, I still wanted to test this thing out with a few games and see how the processor handles itself in 2019. So let's talk about this fire hazard and discuss why this hardware, as quality as some of it is individually, really isn't a good combination. Let's start with the AMD FX 9590. This is a 220 watt CPU. 220 watts. It was originally sold in 2013 for $920 as an OEM part, but later got released to retail for $320 with a bundled Cooler Master liquid cooler. I think the one we have here is an aftermarket Corsair H55. It's okay, but you'd get better cooling capabilities from a decent air cooler. Anyway, the 9590 is an 8 core chip with a stock speed of 4.7 GHz and a boost clock of 5 GHz. It left the factory overheating, and because of these hefty specs, required one of the handful of expensive and supported motherboards in order to run stable. Which brings me on to this. This ASUS 970 Pro Gaming Aura is a good ball, don't get me wrong. There's SLI and Crossfire support, 2133 MHz DDR3 memory compatibility, and on top of that it looks great. But the FX 9590 isn't officially supported. According to the ASUS site, it supports up to 125 watt CPUs. I mean it might work with imminent risk of damaging something, but it's certainly not advisable. I don't know how long the previous owner used this setup for. At this point in the commentary I haven't even tried switching the system on, I just can't bring myself to risk it yet. And what doesn't help or ease my feeling of dread is the absolute shambles of a power supply. At first glance the inexperienced eye might see this and think, ooh, 850 watts and quad rails, what a bargain for £30. But that's the first problem. A power supply's quality is usually reflected in the price, more so than a lot of other components. This one might be fine with less power hungry hardware, but in a build like this I just wouldn't trust it. The Amazon reviews are 50-50, but when half the reviewers say it stopped working in a few months time after they bought it or blew up, that's usually not a good incentive to opt for one. For the time being I'm going to switch it out for my Seasonic Focus Plus. I'd recommend maybe a decent 650 or 700 watt PSU here really, but for the very brief time being, this quality unit will allow us to at least turn the system on, providing the motherboard holds out. I just need to see if everything works, and switching it on for a few seconds shouldn't be an issue, especially when it's been used before with no trouble thus far. Still, I'd advise against it. The graphics card is a GTX 550 Ti. A decent budget GPU back in the day, but one that won't do too well with modern games. Everything looks to be in order with this. I should also mention I've given this PC a clean, hence the lack of dust, because it was really filthy when I took it out the box. I guess that shows it's been used fairly long term, and maybe that means it's been trouble free. For the RAM we have 8 gigs of 1866MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum. This is good stuff. And it's clear that to a certain extent no expense was spared on this build, it's just the end result is a little mismatched. You stay over there, I'm not taking any chances. So I've been putting it off but I guess we better see whether or not this machine works before I can make any upgrades or downgrades. I need to know which individual components do work and which don't and in order to do that I'm going to have to turn it on, albeit very briefly. I want to get onto the aforementioned upgrades or downgrades a little later on in the video though because I'm still in two minds about what to do with 
this PC, but I've got it down here. Let's see if it at least turns on without starting a fire, damaging the motherboard or bursting the Seasonic PSU, which is hopefully the least probable in those three scenarios. Right, so I've got the PC set up and I've decided that, oh, excuse my bird watching book there, just been uh, doing a bit of bird watching. Uh, instead of the 550 Ti, I'm going to use this instead because it requires less power and if I put as little strain on the system as possible, especially considering we've got this 220 watt behemoth in here, well we might have a better chance of it firing up and at least we should be able to get to the BIOS and check that the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU and the power supply all work together in unison. I'll then talk to you about any possible upgrades because in its current state it can't stay like this. All right, so we've got it all plugged in, it looks good, we've got a few lights on the board now, a few RGB effects, but I guess it's the moment of truth. Deep breaths. But first a word from our sponsor. <laughs> I'm just joking, let's go. All right, so it's on. The PC is up and running and to make things better, it's booted straight into Windows 10. I forgot to enter the BIOS, that was a bad move. I'm going to restart and do that now. All right, so here we are in the BIOS. As you can see, we've got the 970 Pro Gaming Aura, Aura with BIOS version 0801, the FX9598 core processor here, and eight gigs of DDR3. The processor's actually pretty stable at 37 degrees idle, which for one of these is pretty decent, or so I've heard, but it remains to be seen how hot that will get under load, something I really don't want to try, as I say, on a motherboard that's only rated for 125 watt CPUs. I'd love to just exit the BIOS now, boot into Windows and test a few things, but it's just not worth the risk, especially when we're dealing with high-end, albeit older, but still pretty expensive hardware here. I've taken silly risks before on this channel, they haven't always paid off. And uh, yeah, I think what we're gonna do is change a couple of things and uh, then go from there. Right, so shall we go down the route of downgrading the 9590 to an 8000 series processor because we've got everything else we need here? Or should I stick with the 9590 and upgrade the motherboard so that we can check out the 9590 and its performance with modern games and CPU intensive tasks. I want to leave it up to you. Let me know what you think in the comments um, because I don't mind doing either. If we switch it out to an 8000 series chip we could probably overclock it anyway and get a very similar experience. Or if we stick with the 9590 we'll certainly have something a little more unique and a chip that really isn't used that much anymore but let me know what you think down below in the comments and as always if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully you'll see this PC soon very soon I had messed that last line up but hopefully you'll see this PC again very soon thank you and I'll see you in the next one